So I believe it's an already established fact that I don't have a PC and that's why I'm still stuck with the mobile app Prisma 3D. Except that I do have a PC actually. <laughs> But the thing is, I don't really count laptops as PCs, they're just kind of like huge phones with keyboards. But a wise man once said if it can run Windows, then it can run Blender as well. And he was absolutely right. A few minutes in, Blender finally installed and it was finally time to actually use the app. But the problem is I wasn't really feeling it. But I was actually willing to push through until I realized that rendering out on this PC would probably take weeks to render a one minute video. And that my friends was the final nail to the coffin. So I decided to stick with Prisma 3D to make my mobile animations. But something caught my eye in the opening scene. And no it's not the Prisma logo, it's what's beneath the Prisma logo, towards the right to be precise. And what a beautiful coincidence, I just so happened to have that app on my PC, Unity. And I was starting to get some really bright ideas but not more than 5 minutes in we were back in a similar situation where I had to actually use the app. But here I was actually feeling it but that didn't change the fact that I didn't know how to use the app. So I head on to YouTube to watch some Bracky's YouTube tutorials on Unity and with Bracky's help I made my first minor tiny game and it was actually working. And at the time I was really proud of this because it took very basic knowledge to make this. But no one ever settled for basic knowledge, I wanted to be a pro. And that was when I remembered my favorite mobile app, Prisma 3D. A 3 the animation and modeling app on Android made with Unity. Believe it or not, making an app like this actually cuts across almost all areas of coding. And if I can pull this off, I will be considered a pro. And when making an app, I think the first thing software developers do is to get a logo. And just like that, we had a logo so I can move on to developing the other parts of the user interface. I had a very simple main menu design in my head and the color scheme I was actually going for was that of Filmora Pro. And the app I was using to design most of the UI was Krita. And within a short time span, I had a good main menu going with some buttons but I didn't really know what to do with the third one. So I just put in what I normally see in mobile apps. Anyways, I went back to making some more UI elements and some code so that the main menu will actually do something. It may not look like it, but this actually took 3 hours to complete. And yeah, that may be too long for something like this, but for a Unity noob, I'm very proud of this. Because everything seems to be working except for the fact that when you delete some elements, it starts to mess up the entire list. And I fixed that very easily with some more code. And now we had a lovely main menu that did absolutely nothing apart from making empty projects. And I loved it very much, so I just built out a quick mobile version to test on my phone. I was gonna hide this part from you but if you click on the open button it will actually give you like a viewport 3D scene which is just as useless as the main menu. And if you knew what it took to get this navigation system to work, you would subscribe. Anyways, I started making more UI elements using a light motion this time because it was actually faster. And then I fit them into my app and tested it using Unity Remote instead and it was working pretty well but a friend of mine didn't seem to like it. Honestly, I felt very insulted, but then somebody else sent me a Cinema 4D reference and it started making this look like shit. Then I got to work as fast as possible on the new UI design using stick nodes instead. And for some reason, using stick nodes was actually faster than the other apps. And at this point, I was already two days in. We're gonna create a new project and we're going to name it something simple like the name of the app, Recon. This is the um, About tab. We're going to close that and now we're going to open this project and we have implemented parts of the UI design. It's looking okay and we can also navigate around the scene fully this time instead of just like rotating around objects. We have also implemented a way to outline objects that you touch and it actually took very long to get it to work but at least it's working now. And as you can see, we have two camera types, the orbit and the like normal camera to just move around the scene without going round things. Um, sometimes I think it will be useful for some type of camera movements. 
and no it did not work first time and we actually had a lot of issues that led up to that but at least it's working now and now that it's working it's time to get to the interesting stuff yeah that was supposed to be ray tracing i tried making a very optimized version of ray tracing but it visibly did not work as well as i thought it would so i decided to scrap the entire system and do it in a different way in my defense it was supposed to work so i went behind to the codes to make some changes and it was working somehow but not the way we wanted and finally i don't know what i did but it started doing something so i just held on to see what was going on and as you can see it was actually working but i think some of the values were a little bit off because that isn't what shadow should look like and that is clearly the wrong direction and the gizmos should not cast shadows so if i were to rate this i would give it a 2 out of 10 but I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of beautiful, if not that it was so messed up. I finally figured out what was wrong and when I fixed it, we lost the soft shadows and the gizmos were still casting their own shadows. And that is not supposed to be. So I fixed the gizmo issue but the soft shadows weren't still there. And that's just the thing about making a render engine as a noob. Once you fix one problem, another arises because as you can clearly see that shadow isn't very nice. And yeah, I changed how the screen um, updates to look a little better. And that's also what I love about making things from scratch. You can easily change up the values to get yourself like some rendering variations. And I absolutely love the freedom I had with the colors. At this point, I was just playing around with my render engine so I imported in the Blender Monkey to like test out and I think we can all agree that it's not very beautiful but it is also not that bad to look at so I decided to name this render engine illusion and I started making some variations and shaders out of this engine like the tune shader and personally I can't really say I like this shader but at least having variations and possibilities makes me smile concerning the shadows i tried blurring it to make it softer but that clearly did not work so i did some math and brought in some extra formulas and equations and it kind of ruined the whole system but at least i liked how it was a possibility honestly i don't even know how things like this happen but at least i can just play with them in the meantime and i decided to change the screen of this pattern once more and it was looking even better so i just switched over to my tune shader to see what things look like over there and that is when i go an idea and using that idea i actually found a way to make this work then i piped up the render rounds to get it to render faster and then we had a result that wasn't so bad and that line at the center of the scene is probably because i put the light inside of an object but the moment i took that out the shadow still had this white outline but that was probably because the light has a collider so the moment i turned that off everything started looking far better and now i was finally ready to make my first render with recon 4d and what i went for was to put the horse on top of the platform and shift it a little bit then put a wall in the background which is just a copy of the floor then i moved the light in front of the horse instead and created another horse copy and the shadows had a lot of dots which I did not like very much and the colors were a little bit off. So I made the horses all nice a little bit darker to blend out those dots. And to my surprise it actually looks better in the tune shader. And the color I was going for was like a pale dark purple. And when I got that I just posed up the nights for the shot. And that was one week and two days worth of progress. And if this video gets like two likes I will go for another week.